You said something that really um, is top of mind. I remember 2015 election. Um, there was a lot of conversation and I've been in the media then. I've been working with another platform. And I do remember quite a few people came on television and said Nigeria is broke in 2015. This is 2022. We're still saying Nigeria is broke. And we're saying we're going to find it difficult to find the finance or the fund to run our economy and to grow it. One of the areas that's being said to be a source of major problem for our economy is security. And I've had opportunity of having conversation with you on a number of occasions where we talked about security. Because if there is a level of insecurity, especially in the Northeast and the Northwest, then our food basket is decimated. What is your candidate going to do that will be different from what this government is doing to ensure that our food basket creates a security in terms of food? Good. Briefly, let's talk about the economy briefly before we move here. This government came in over the last eight years. What song have they been singing? That they're going to take 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years. So in, in 10 years, so every year they will take out 10 million. But here you are, Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, in October, I came out with the data. 133 million Nigerians are in multidimensional poverty. Multidimensional poverty. 65% of them are in the north. And of that, 35% are from the northwest, where I'm from, where the president is from. So you tell me, Nigerians should ask themselves, what have they been doing over the last eight years? The president, they've incited these in his speeches, several of his speeches. The vice president will be reading it over the teleprompter. We are going to take out 100 million. So they've just been talking. So they have failed when they, as far as the economy. And for me, this is real. I go back to Katsina, where I come from, and I see the poverty. Many villages, you take out 1,000 naira, go to the village square and ask for a change. Nobody can give you change. Our people are poorer today than they were before this APC government came in. Anybody associated with APC cannot absolve himself. Back to insecurity. For me, insecurity is real. And this is one of the reasons I came into this fight. I'm a physician. We came into this struggle because we must. Because now where I come from, where the presidents come from, we have 34 local governments. Of the 34, 30 local governments are under siege by bandits. A third of my state, the president's state are under siege by bandits. We've never seen IDPs before this government came in. Today in my state, capital city is filling up with IDPs. We gave President Mohamed Buhari 1.2 million votes in 2019. Lagos gave him half of that. What do we have to show for that in Kasana? Over the last eight years to worship of our son. What we have to show for that is death and destruction. Our villages have been pillaged. Women rape, cattle rustle, and our people kill daily. And this is the story only in Kazina, all over. From Adamawa to Zamfara, we're still burying our dead every day. This is security. We are talking about farming and agriculture. Our people are not able to go to the farm because of insecurity. Bandits are occupying their, have scared them of their land. Even if they go to the land, they have to pay levy. 